the the title thing is the really the big major thing that I was pushing and that I've kind of pushed and really 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 contributed to as far as like my time and knowledge and learning over the last you know years uh, you know it, it, it the, the title was kind of like I'm looking for that title change so some people may not want to have a title change maybe they just want all money 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 but once you obtain you know some money then you, you have to kind of go for other things and sometimes a title would mean more control over uh, some of the executables or the title could mean you know a future you know um, venturing off and creating your own business and obviously I'll get to that uh, but the title was the most important thing after one year working there after one year of working there and kind of introducing my knowledge and and you know I had worked this company was way smaller than the company I was used to working with or you know working for and the department was so much smaller but after one year I'm sure, like if you see me I'm, as a matter of fact coffee break light some incense to keep these bugs off of me let's see if I could pick up where I left off um, I was probably talking about titles and you know working for the company that I had worked for and to be honest I was there for like you know a year without all of the things that I was used to having an entire department um, an entire IT department just like a different hierarchy and, and levels and different positions um, we had some things in place obviously it's a corporate company um, but after one year the you know the CEO kind of stopped over and I think some of the stuff that we were producing since we were kind of like a subsidiary company the stuff that we were producing was I mean to my knowledge if someone else tells me different then you know explain to me or tell me different but some of the stuff some of the stuff that we were producing or the work that we were producing it was like on a level where it looked better than some of the corporate stuff so that's when the CEO came over and you know I was working with um, one of their top sales reps you know because of course throughout my career I, I work and assisted um, some of the the sales reps that were in the field um, <laughs> if I were to randomly name any sales rep I, I, I could name a, a couple but um, I'll I think that um, a sales rep that I'll just name is, is I'll just say this guy Tony Eschmeyer Tony Tony I'll name him because Tony Eschmeyer he was a sales rep that had, <laughs> had come to us from Walker in Parkersburg he had worked for Walker and um, you know Walker I, you know the con construction machinery and I still remember t today this his presentation he had to present to a bunch of strangers this that stuff is hard it's tougher than you think until you're put on the spot and you have to kind of like present to someone um, but, but yeah Tony because <laughs> he was all he was always in the gym with me <laughs> in a quick little tidbit he one day he comes back up like I would go to the gym you know I'm like in my early 20s and I would just be working out or at this point I could have been in my late 20s and one day he had, um, and I'm not, this is not attention deficit. One day he had kind of come up in a marketing meeting and he's like, I, I saw Akima down there in the gym. He started, to, I was like, he's like, man, he had arms like a linebacker, <laughs> like an NFL linebacker. I'm like, shh, you know, <laughs> kind of breaking my nerve persona. But, um, but anyhow, um, but yeah, so you know, my entire career, let's see, this is spam risk calling me. I'll just kind of hang up. And once you donate to one company, I'll, they continue to call you back. But um, working with different sales reps that are out in the field selling, you know, I kind of, kind of carry that over to, you know, my second job, my new job, and and um, again, the CEO came over and he kind of wanted us to kind of migrate over to corporate, and that's when. Um, I had moved into the other building next door and that was that was pretty cool you know still with the manager title so um that was cool and you know I feel like time flew by so fast because we had uh, we had COVID 
and then not we had like we had COVID, but the world you know COVID had come in 2019 and so i think 2020 that was the first time i had to pull out my dictionary or google <laughs> and relook up the word furlough it's like i've heard it before <laughs> i actually heard a rapper say it before um <laughs> not i can't think of who or what song but um yeah furlough so i was on furlough they were like yeah i got the phone call and you know from you know hr the ceo it was, it was funny because um it, it, i could see who was all on the call no 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 I, I, it was a phone call so i could just hear it but it, it actually reminded me of during during covid you know this is the time where i kind of boast or i kind of talk about something that i've done for someone So during COVID, I remember we, we, before I was on a furlough, we had, um, we were having these team meetings and I think at the time we were utilizing go to webinar, uh, which is, 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 I don't want to say antiquated because it's, it's, new, it's, you know, go to meetings, go to webinar. It's, it's been a company that's, you know, they've been evolving with their software over the years. But once you get into their software of hosting a webinar, it, it gets sophisticated. And, um, you know, one of my coworkers at the time, Joey, Joey Level, super cool young guy. He he kind of trained me on um, on go to meetings and go to webinar. He trained me on the basics. And, you know, we were doing our meetings that way. And it was, it was so it's such a sophisticated software that some people may not utilize it to its um, total capacity um, or all of its, you know, for all of its features, you know, so this is around the time when Zoom started coming out and I am one of those people who I'm not going to look at a camera and lie. <laughs> I was looking at the Zoom IPO and as uh, I'm not sure what the, we, we all know IPOs take place at 930. So um, during the a little rabbit is chewing on a lot of wood so during the ipo yes i was one of those initial investors in zoom but um so anyhow so during you know working on our go-to webinars and um during COVID, you know it was the first time when we started working remote and working remote i thought man these meetings are so boring sometimes it's not really boring i mean it's work um, but I thought, how can we liven this up? Uh, you know, let, let's use, uh, I ended up suggesting, you know what, since this is our first, you know, my group, you know, I was part of product engineering, uh, since this is our first meeting after, you know, like weeks or I can't even remember, maybe it was even months, I can't recall, but, um, I had suggested that maybe we did it in zoom. I, Akima Webb was the person who suggested using newer technology and doing the next meeting in Zoom. And of course, I have screenshots and snapshots of that Zoom where I, I, I think I had put on my, um, the shirt that I wore to Jamaica, I put on my um, my little kind of flowery shirt and then I like set my background to like the beach and I had like a towel and I tried to like, <laughs> you know, just kind of jokingly portray that I was at the beach but I was still working message <laughs> um but yeah so i introduced the video meetings and then i think that's when we started like further looking into um some of the capabilities of the software that we had you know which kind of translated into teams and teams meetings which a lot of people who uh, probably work remote are familiar with so yeah the video meetings and stuff like that <laughs> um but yeah so chapter two I really want theme music for this but I don't want to get copywritten and what I'm gonna do is ultimately add an instrumental to this video just to make it not be so boring and not just you know me talking throughout the entire video uh, but the instrumental that I'm go going to add is an instrumental that I actually created you know in reason uh, 2002 when I moved to Parkersburg, West Virginia, 
you know, there were some guys in college who, man, we look. If you want to know where all the hackers were, <laughs> like art school, design school, oh man. But I didn't want pirated software, so I actually forked up. I actually forked up the uh, the three. It was probably I can't even remember. I remember it was a lot. It was like three hundred dollars or something or or more for um for a reason. You know, this is this will look familiar to people who who know what that is. That's reason. Those are the official CDs, you know, <laughs> not the hacked version, but you know, 2000. When, when I graduated from college, oh, here's all three. Let me do that again. There we go. That's the entire software. That I think that software at the time. That's when you can just, you know, work on the web or free stuff. Um, but that software cost, I feel like $300 or $350. It was, it was a lot. Uh, but anyways, I learned how to do instrumentals and beats with that. I'm going to put that on this video so that I don't get copywritten by putting Carl Thomas on here. Now, you know, it, rec recording live is funny because you get to see who can stay on point and who can stay on topic and subject. But so let's see here. We are at um, COVID, the videos, you know, fast forward to here recently because I know it was like long, but I purposely, I meant to make this video long on purpose. Like I said, I'm trying to get viewing hours up, you know, but, you know, purpose, I'm trying to make this video longer. Now, up until here recently, things like working sometimes you know if you're Michael Jordan you know it is I have to use an analogy uh, that um, an analogy comparison that someone you know or people are more familiar with versus just kind of just giving you some deep story but you know if Michael Jordan was on the team I'm not Michael Jordan <laughs> I'm not even BJ Armstrong but <laughs> If you have someone that's like superior on a team and then the team says, you know, we're, you know, okay, franchise, <laughs> we're about to get this new player just for whatever reason, for whatever the mechanics could be, the politics or business and the new, and they're like, and this new player, they're going to get more playing time than you. You know, is don't don't worry about them getting more endorsements. You, you know, this is part of the business. I mean, a, a person on the bench understands their role at practice. The the star player couldn't get better at practice if you didn't have a bench player playing against them. So nothing's wrong with being on a bench. Um, and I have no problem with that. It's when there's conflicts of um, positions there's entitlement and then at the end of the day I'm from Michigan you know so you know and don't 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 just remember uh, we're about to see some dogs and rabbits <laughs> uh, but the, the person was um, just not as skilled and I just felt like working with someone like that oh one thing Commercial break. Chris, what's going on? What's up? Hey, I don't need any help. Uh, <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm good. You sure? Yeah. I'm, what are you doing? Um, I'm recording a video. But because because look, um, yeah, I'm actually to the part of the video where it's the most important part, okay. where um, I was working with some people you who. Singing? No, no, no. <laughs> but, but yeah. <laughs> no. So you got everything taken care of? Yeah, for the most part. I decided not to. Decide to not to move it yet or well, period. Eventually, I might. Well, I, opened, I haven't opened it up in years. It's, it's all got my mom shit in it. Yeah. And it covers a bunch of wires and stuff. And once if I, I pulled it out and cleaned behind it, and I was like, what the fuck am I going to do with all these wires okay. if I move it? It's just easier just to leave it. Okay, well, if you change your mind, let me know. I will, buddy. I'm going to include you on this video. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's putting Buckeyes in my um 
my windshield wiper blades of my car. <laughs> the funny story about um, the, the person who just walked past is he was actually a vendor of ours that sold, um, you know, branded, you know, branded materials like pens and you know where there was notepads and just the things that you kind of like you promotional pieces uh, with your company so it was funny like I actually met him in Easton you know here in Columbus Ohio and uh, yeah he was our vendor and then years later I don't know I was going straight to the gas straight to the gas station and for some strange reason right when I got on this slope it, it, it I don't know how these gas cans work but I got on the slope and ran out of gas right before I got to the gas station. And um, so I had uh, turned on my hazard lights. I think this is the day. The worst thing about it was raining. And I think I, um, I had a hoodie on. <laughs> so here I am. <clears throat> you know, my tone and everything with a hoodie on. And I'm like out of gas. Like, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know a lot of people in Columbus, Ohio. And I cut on my hazard lights. And um, out of nowhere, this, this Jeep pulls up you know with two guys in it they're like hey we can take you to the gas station i'm like oh cool this this is perfect and i'm in the back i'm like cool you know let me get my gas can i'm in the back seat of this jeep and the guys are this is like almost one minute from the gas station and these guys are like talking to me they're like yeah so so what do you what do you do and you know i'm like yeah this is my first is when i actually it's funny you know the timing of that that was right when um, 2017, I had started working at that new place and I'm like, yeah, I'm so used to going to Easton, which is just five minutes away. Now I have to drive all the way to like Pataskala, Ohio. So, you know, they're like, Pataskala, Easton, they heard me say Easton and, um, uh, the, the guy's like, where at, where did you used to work in Easton? So I named my company and he's like, he, he looked in the, he was listening to my voice. I had a hoodie on. He was listening to my voice and hearing me say that. And he turned around and like. And he's like, Akima? <laughs> that, that's when I knew that the world was getting smaller. Like, these guys, literally, the guy who just walked his dogs by, he um, picked me up from running out of, he was with someone else, they picked me up running out of gas, um, coming right off of the little highway thing. <laughs> so that was just too funny. You know, he's like, Akima? <laughs> that's hilarious. You're in a whole other city and... You know, people kind of just hear you talk and recognize. But, um, but yeah, you know, here recently, I felt like there was like a little bit of butted heads. And, and I've gone through this before, and I really learned in the past from something like that. You know, some, you know, someone that I kind of like, when I had had that, you know, that incident, I didn't really understand because you could have all this experience. You could be like, I'm Jordan on the team, you know, you, you could, whatever. And you, you could run into something like that and you don't really know how to react, you know. And and it's naturally for people to defend themselves. And I felt like a little bit after that, I ended up becoming really good co-workers T to this day. Even if the person doesn't consider me a friend, you know, I consider them a friend. Um, because it was just a, it was just a funny, a funny conflict, and then it ended up, you know, being two people working really well together. Um, you know, that was that was pretty cool. But, but you know, at this new company, you kind of you kind of have these heads that butt. And just to give a few, you know, real examples, um, to give a few real examples we have these divider you know divider panels in our cubes and the person i had put my divider because that's how the offices are designed i put my divider up and the person told me to take the divider down now <clears throat> remember the part i'm from michigan not just any part of michigan uh, but for someone to tell a 42 year old yeah i'm still 42 for someone to tell a 42-year-old established father or dad and talk to me like I'm a kid and tell me to take a divider down because they need to see me, I instantly thought, I've come too far. I have too much knowledge. I've accumulated 
too much, whether it be anything financially or assets or whatever. I've come too far for someone to treat me like I'm in the 10th grade and say, take that down. I need to see you. And in, in case anyone was wondering what my response was or my reaction was, it was I stood up and I kind of because I get it like you can't I'm sitting here depending on which shirt I wear I either look fat or I look slender but I get it sometimes you know people could be intimidating but I stood up and I'm like what I had to ask what are the benefits and I asked very professional and politely what are the benefits of being able to just see me I could just stand up just like I am now you know um and then other little unprofessional, weird things that were going on. And um, ultimately, that people start weighing that out and looking at, you know, what they've done for that company, what they've done, you know, in their career. Um, and, you know, in your early 40s um, and when you're established, are you in the position to just kind of like accept that and continue getting a paycheck? I was, I was paid well. But that means, you know, that, you know, between those work hours, I was paid well. But everyone's going to weigh that in and say, am I going to be a boss or am I going to be this person that kind of gets, you know, talked down to or told to do? And the same person you know with that analogy of jordan on the team and someone else coming there with all the accolades and or you know someone else coming there and you having all the accolades and them not being able to execute it's just really hard to know that you are the front you are franchise you are that person you know and to have to kind of like kind of um and nothing's wrong with submitting to superiors we should all do that this person was um unprofessional they went about it all wrong and they couldn't show they couldn't execute and show me anything so that's why i'm making the seven years later video and next i'll be talking about what i'm doing okay so the meat and potatoes of this video is pretty much letting everyone know like history repeats itself i've gone through this before um, it's, it's to me, I rather uh, continue pursuing, um, you know, my dreams and some of the things I've, I've accomplished and seen and, and pursued different dreams. Um, and along those dreams, you'll develop new dreams for some of us. And when I was 25, I started my designs you want um, with the little smiley face, which Amazon, obviously, they, they stole my little smiley face or they they saw the same thing that I did because um, I had that as the letter U uh, but um, I did that at 25 and then at 29 I it, it had just come about um, I wanted a sports bar that um, was very true and I did that you know I obtained my liquor license in 38 days and I remember one of the things that I was kind of telling the, the commissioner the people who was approving it I was telling them about my launch date, September 11th, and that date is so significant. Um, it, I was telling them that that was my uh, opening date, my grand opening, and that, you know, that the pro I've already sent out flyers, I've already printed flyers, and people are anticipating on coming there, and that um, some of the proceeds would go towards St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So, yep, yeah, when I was 29, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, make sure that I did that. And ever since 29, I've actually stuck to St. Jude and many other different charities and organizations as far as like contributing it to. Um, but, you know, as far as like dreams, you know, uh, throughout your career, you're going to learn more, you're going to obtain and accumulate so much knowledge and meet so many people to where you never know what you're going to want to do. And I think that at the age, you know, I'll say at the time, 42, at the age of 42 with different assets, you know, having a family, um, different savings, uh, different skills, uh, and even the people that you know, like, I felt like this is the time that I, I, there's so much money out there that I can do this. And if I kind of 
and this does not apply to anyone with a nine to five, which is really <clears throat> eight thirty to five thirty or <clears throat> seven to five. Um, but with the you know the phrase or quote we call it a nine to five, it's no way that I could do everything that I want to do because within those hours I'm making you know I'll just say under three hundred dollars a day. So you know making under three hundred dollars a day versus what I can do, understanding social media, technology, um, even businesses. So that's when I kind of concluded, well, actually uh, migrated my initial LLC, which was Web Connected LLC, when I had, you know, was down in West Virginia, to Ohio. So I have an Ohio, uh, Ohio um, Web Connected LLC. And that's mainly to run my digital ad agency. Um, I've already worked with different people. Um, getting clients is, is nothing and I'd rather do it when I'm at an age where you know I'm kind of like charismatic I can still get out there um, and I can travel and you know I'd rather do this now because it's not really just about me or my business it's about kind of helping other people's business about educating them on in addition to the business you know or, you know something you can pass down to your family uh, or even um, you know, someone might need a business to to kind of maybe they always wanted to do charity, but they need an additional money to do that. You know, some sort of residual income. So that's when I started web connectedcom And, you know, I, I built this like a business. This is not just a website. This is not just a website and social media. Uh, this is a website with all the connecting pieces that are legit. And when I say connected, I mean from. Uh, business accounts to business loans to you know the accounts connected to all of the websites and social media and products connected to uh, spreadsheets and there's a lot it's bigger than a lot of people may um, may think but um, I may finish this video with more lighting tomorrow so a lot of content purpose you know I purposely wanted this video to be long you know, you may watch it, you may start it and stop it, but definitely save it. I mean, if you know me. And at the end of the day, I'm not doing this video to get money from you, but I'm doing this video so that you can get money. And support and feed your family.